Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. We have been talking about cellular respiration and stages of cellular respiration, especially at carbohydrate metabolism. We talked about glycolysis, we talked about pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Now in this video, we are going to talk about all of them, especially in one way, the regulation of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, PDH and electron transport chain and especially all about regulation of carbohydrate metabolism in an overview manner while the second part of the video will explain exactly how each of the processes are regulated. So now if we talk about this catabolic pathway where we are breaking down glucose and producing energy the regulation processes are mostly similar between glycolysis Krebs cycle and uh, and pyruvate dehydrogenase complex while electron transport chain is completely different and the process of inhibition is completely different but glycolysis Krebs cycle regulation and stages of glycolysis and Krebs cycle regulation in term of overall metabolic pathways are very similar how let's talk at it the first thing that I want to talk about is this regulation regulation of enzymes involved in the process of glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So if we talk about the regulation of glycolysis or Krebs cycle whatever you choose the idea is there are few ways the whole process can be regulated. The first first thing that we can go with is product inhibition. The second type feedback inhibition. Okay. The third type is the substrate clearance and the fourth type is allosteric regulation. These are the four ranges and ways of regulation that we will see in case of all the glycolysis and Krebs cycle enzymes. Now I want you to know about each of those four types an example of those four types because actually when we'll be talking about glycolysis and and pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and Krebs cycle I also talk about all of them in details but still here I'm going to tell you about this mechanism in overview so what about the product inhibition product inhibition is a situation let's say let me draw a hypothetical pathway first let's take here starts with X. X is our substrate. Or let's say let's let's make it S as our substrate. We have several intermediate, which is first X, X is converted to Y, and finally Y is converted to the product. If this is the hypothetical pathway, starts with the substrate S, ends with the product P, and the intermediates naming X and Y. If we look at here, this product. If product is present in the environment then logically thinking if product is already there in the environment it's not worth doing this whole process so presence of product is going to inhibit the stages of conversion that is known as product inhibition now in case of glycolysis if we take one example we are going from glucose to pyruvate. So if pyruvate is already present in higher concentration, then glycolysis will be inhibited. This is one example. Let's go to the second type. That is feedback inhibition. Feedback inhibition is a situation where any of the intermediate metabolites can inhibit the upper metabolites that means you know this is the sequential substrate is in the top then we have x then x is converted to y then y is to product p now here feedback inhibition means once we make y that is a signal that no longer y is required enough y is being produced so they go for a negative feedback here just like product inhibition very common like product inhibition the only difference is Product inhibition is a type of feedback inhibition with the product, the ultimate product. But rest of the other feedback inhibitions may occur with any other intermediate metabolites. 
Now the third type of inhibition. Okay, let let me give you an example of feedback inhibition. That is the first step of uh, the glycolysis. Glucose is converted to glucose one phosphate. Now if glucose one phosphate is present in high concentrations, that means you don't need to produce no more glucose one phosphate. So glucose one phosphate will do a feedback inhibition or conversion of glucose into glucose one phosphate. The third type is substrate clearance. Now this term itself explains. Substrate clearance means if we have higher substrate concentration, that means we have enough. Let's say example we have enough glucose. So what we what the body wants to do? Body wants to make energy out of it because glucose is an energetic molecule. So let's break them down, produce energy. So presence of glucose will influence a positive role of that whole metabolic pathway. So here if you have more substrate, it will help them to be cleared or released and broken down into the product P. So more products will be prepared. Now in case of glucose, if more glucose is there and body needs energy, so body will break down glucose and it will produce energy. And if body still don't need energy, but still we have enough glucose in our body. In that case, there is another pathway of converting glucose into glycogen, which is a carbohydrate complex, complex carbohydrate or polysaccharides, where we can store the glucose as carbohydrate, as, as glycogen in our liver. You can store it there. So this is about substrate clearance. So whenever you have the substrate concentration high, the product will be positively regulated. If we have product inhibition high, uh, product molecules more, then it will be negatively regulated. Then the fourth one is allosteric regulation. That there are some other molecules that should be present. Some other, not about the substrate, not about the product. Maybe some intermediate metabolites or maybe not. Some other metabolites, completely different metabolites from a separate metabolic pathway is going to interfere. It's going to alter the active site of the target enzyme and the enzyme will not function. So it is inhibited. Known as allosteric regulation. Now allosteric regulation can be both positive as well as negative. While the idea is, here we will see one example of positive allosteric regulation. Is you know, the job of glucose converting into glucose 1 phosphate. Right? In this case, glucose 2, 6 bisphosphate. This particular molecule, if present, positively regulates the conversion of glucose into glucose 1 phosphate. This is one example of allosteric regulation. It's a positive regulation. Similarly, negative regulation can also work. So, the conversion of glucose into glucose 1-phosphate, or let's say, actually, sorry, glucose 6-phosphate it should be. Conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, not 1-phosphate. So, during this process, if citrate is present, citrate is going to prevent this conversion. So, it's negatively regulated. Okay. Now, another important thing that I want to tell you regarding all these catabolic pathways, and especially carbohydrate metabolism, that the job of this carbohydrate metabolism or any other catabolic pathways of uh, either carbohydrate metabolism or lipid metabolism or protein metabolism is to produce ATP, which is energy molecules. So, if we have enough energy already, this is going to prevent the process of catabolic pathways, right? But if we have adenosine monophosphate or adenosine diphosphate, in that case, they are going to help to produce more and more ATP. So, presence of AMP and ADP will help to positively influence all those catabolic pathways to go forward. Presence of ATP will negatively impact all these reactions to go forward. Now, based on this particular idea, we are going to see where this idea is going to apply for glycolysis pathways and Krebs cycle pathways in each and every regulatory stages. 
because not all the stages of glycolysis or Krebs cycles are regulatory only few are for example in glycolysis only three steps are uh, very much regulatory we'll see how they are regulated in the second part of this video